As you can see, I've been busy sitting and doing my dabby dabby touch touch with the silver all over this thing because evidently Boba Fett treats his helmet about as well as a five-year-old treats his batting helmet after hitting a double. So uh, yeah, he just, this thing's thrashed, seriously. But uh, it kind of came out really cool. I was very happy with it. You see a little dark area right there? That's me actually adding black to the silver to get this color, which is gonna come in with next. So don't have to remix it, just add to what I already had. And I also took that yellow, add a little bit of silver to it, the one I use up here, add a little bit of silver and a touch of white to lighten it up a little bit and that'll allow me to do uh, some of the yellow stains that are on this helmet as well as paint some of the additional pieces. A good, a good example of that, I've got this masked off because I'm gonna come in and add some silver to this as the same way I touched this up but after I hit it with the yellow. Same thing with this piece and same thing with this piece. Now these are all one side of the helmet. This is what I call the the side that gets this thing, the, the little heads up display. The other side gets green here and that stays silver and that stays silver. So I've already got these all masked. Before I come in and start doing my dabbing with the black, uh, or the blackish silver mixture, um, I, got, I got my my yellow already in here. See how it sprays? Don't grab the wrong one. And I'm just gonna hold it right here. I don't really need to turn the booth on for this because it's really a faint, light yellow. Now it looks a little almost lime greeny when you look at it. And that's because I added a bit of silver. Anytime you add silver to something, you're gonna get a little bit of that color. That's exactly what I want because what I want here, it's almost like a chromate yellow or chromate green. Anyone that works with Mopar parts and stuff knows that kind of color right there. It's the color that a lot of undercarriage parts are. And that's the color that I want. It will kind of go really nice on the side. Now this piece goes literally right there, attaches in there. So I want this piece to be the same way. I'm not concerned about the inside here because that's not seen. I am concerned about the outside edge. So I'm just gonna hit the outside lightly. We don't need a lot of paint to get coverage on this. Don't need a lot. A lot just means it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. Put that aside. And then there's this piece here, same thing. This is the bottom half of those and it gets that cool chromate yellowish color, which I will be using to dab in because this color is the under color of some of this part of the helmet and you'll see some of it. It'll look, I want it to look like the paints come through and the first thing it, it, it ate down to was this color, then it ate down to a darker black primer, then it ate down to this silver that's the actual base of the helmet. If you understand the way something's painted, you can successfully create a full finished version of it because you can kind of think the way the paint was. Now, put this airbrush aside. Luckily, I saved my green. I sprayed these inside areas here with. Always save your colors because you may need them later. And I'll use this in the airbrush. Whoops, one second. Drop the cap, it happens. And I'm gonna come in and spray this dark green here. The nice coverage we get from that illustration paint. Covers really nicely. This is gonna have a lot, I keep losing my cap. I think it's got a clog in it, that's why I pressurized it. That's all the green I really needed on that. That looks pretty good right there. Let that sit there and dry. This is gonna get a lot of that silver etching on that green as well, so I'm not really particular about, ooh, it's not perfect. I don't want it to be, I want it to be look like it's thrashed. Don't have this attitude all the time. Many of your clients don't want that. But when you're doing faux finishing, always do that. Now I've got a little bit of 4011 in here I've been using as a reducer for my brush. And let's come in with this black slash silver mixture. I, of course, will use my reference image. Let me see which one am I gonna bring up first. Now, this one's a good one. That's the head on shot right there. And you can see here, there is some different areas. It's got that darker color right there on the red and up there around the indentation. We'll leave the main indentation like this, the, the actual silver. Then we'll come in and add some more of this around it. So using this as a reference shot right here, I'll come in and kind of hit some of these areas. Now you look at that, you're like, oh, that's much darker. It dries lighter. It's always important when you're Make messing around with paint to check and see how it's drying later because you may look at a color and go oh that's perfect and then later you're like oh wait it's too light things either dry things either do three things they dry the same they dry darker they dry lighter which ones i don't know 
Let it dry and find out. Also, some things look different when you clear coat them. Like if I'm coming in and clearing this with shiny clear, it may have a totally different look than if I come in and hit with matte clear. Well, this whole thing's gonna get a matte clear job. Maybe a, a combination, I'm gonna cocktail it. A little bit of matte, a little bit of satin. I don't want totally matte. I'm gonna come in and use this silver mixture on the inside of the, his uh, fast forward and reverse thing. So remember, Boba Fett says, be kind, rewind. There we go. You can see him better from a distance. And it also kind of emphasizes the fact that the undercoating on this helmet is probably some different colors like that. Plus there's a couple of areas around it that have that black, those little black dots. Little black areas where the primer is coming through. Now what I'll do is that since the primer is the first thing that is coming off on this, you'll go around the silver, and not all of it, and some of those silver areas, they're gonna get a little bit of, a, of, a, of that black splotchy surround. I'm not gonna go over all the silver, kinda, kinda, this color will look different over silver, and it'll look different over, over green. So know that when you're, when you're coming in and you're adding your, your additional primer texture, or whatever you wanna call this, dark sealer, So I want to like have that indentation in there, a little circular indentation. I don't want to lose that concept of the circle, so I'll kind of trace it a little bit and then I'll blotch it around there using this color. And there's some areas that just get nothing but this color. Like there'll be a lot of this color all by itself. Because remember, it's a secondary primer. And don't want, don't want to do brush strokes. If you accidentally do brush strokes, come in and, and, and tap them with the brush to get rid of it. Because otherwise, the brush stroke will make it look like you just brushed the paint on. You want it to look like it's chunks, little chippy things. Little, and you can leave little dots around it because look at those little pinhole chips all the time. So I'm going to continue doing this. and. Uh, since this is basically as exciting as watching paint dry, you can come back in a little bit and we'll see it with all the, the, the black and silver. And then the next step will be coming in with that chromate. And there's not as much of that, but it's on the, on the helmet as well. And uh, then we'll be doing our final touch-ups and get ready to do the final assembly and call it a day on this helmet. Well, that was almost as much fun as stippling the silver. And I say almost as much fun because there wasn't as much of it. But uh, you see, I got the dark all the way around the silver here. It gave it a lot of depth. Kind of shows the differentiation between the areas that are busted away down the sealer and down to the actual metal. Has a real nice eroded look. You want to look natural, almost erratic. I did add a little bit to my airbrush and just shaded it a little bit here, and that gives a subtle shadow. So when this is clear, it's really going to have an indentation look without having to actually dig a hole in that helmet. There's only one step left to go on that, and that's using that chromate yellow and coming in on a couple of areas to show some of that primer, which is basically this color here. And if you see, I've already unmasked these pieces that we painted earlier, and I came in and added some extra silver to show some wear on that chromate. And this piece is just about done. Uh, this piece, I came and I masked, and yes, I didn't show you, but you can figure out how to do that. I just took some eighth inch tape, masked it off, and sprayed that same green I had before right in there, brushed in a little bit of silver on that, and then eroded away some stuff on that piece. So this piece actually attached, it goes like this on the side of the whole helmet with uh, the, the heads up display, the little thing that sticks out of the antenna, people call it, comes right there. This part is just a backing behind that actually holds the antenna itself. So in actuality, this helmet does function. You can drop it, drop the, the heads up view down. Now there's still a little bit of texturing left to go. As you see this piece here, I've unmasked it. I came in with some of the silver and dabbled it here and there. And, uh, and it looks nice and worn and it'll match up nicely on this side of the helmet. It actually comes right in here and it overlaps some of that silver in the background. So you can see how this is gonna look really cool right there on the side of the helmet matches exactly. And we're gonna, when we're done, we're gonna epoxy this thing on. Uh, now before epoxy, and since we got paint here, I'm actually gonna scuff away some of the paint and take a, like a Dremel or a drill and just do a couple of little random holes there on both sides. That gives an area for the glue to really stick onto on that. 
Well, we're not still done with this. I'm, I'm looking at the piece here on my phone. You can see here, if you zoom in, right there, there's some red on this piece as well. You see, I've gotten pretty close to the way that is, and there's a funky little weird insignia in black. There's actually little insignias on both sides, and I can, that's a little detail stuff you can do later, and I'll do it at the end. But I'm gonna come in with some red, and I still kept my red from before. I spray on the helmet, and if I need to do some touch-ups on the red here, I will, just maybe to add some more depth. I'm gonna use that red to doppel this thing as well, and I'll show you that right now. I've got the red right here, and all I need to do, doesn't take a lot, is just coming like on the bottom here. I'm just going to dot it in here and there. Let me dry the brush a bit. And just make it look like it's just some leftover red paint peeking through. And that matches up the rest of the, the piece nicely. Now this doesn't cover as well. Why? It's not a metallic. The other ones had that silver you know, uh, Quicksilver in it, that aluminum makes it cover very, very fast. But it still works out pretty good. Just take a little bit longer to dry. And I'll come along here and do the same. It's got a couple areas that are kind of eroded, like the I wrote it, literally all the paint's gone except for a little bit of this red here and there. You know, I'll go a little bit on the sides as well to show dimension and depth. You know, if paint's eroding, it's not going to be clean on one side. It may be clean for a little bit because it chipped and it created an angle when it chipped, but yeah, just play around with it and make it look random. Try and make it look random. If you make it too orderly, it looks like you did it on purpose. And that kind of defeats the entire purpose of this. And I can add some that's not actually on there. I can take some artistic license if I want. I don't think the Boba Fett police are going to be arguing, oh, that's not the correct, accurate. You're not canon. That's not canon erosion. Yeah, yeah, well, there we go. Have it here and there. And it looks a little bit different when it's clear coated with the matte. It'll all have the same sheen, so it'll all fall into the same plane. Look very, very similar. Yeah, a little bit on the side here just for fun. Okay, there we go. We got my erosion on this piece. Let that sit and dry. And, uh, and then the other pieces are all fairly finished. These are all kind of done except for that little logo, a little weird and Mandalorian insignia that's on the side. Um, I'm going to do that with black illustration and a different brush, but for right now, I'm going to come in and luckily I get to do some more stippling because I just love it so much. You can tell by the tone of my voice. Um, but I don't have to do as much because there's not as much on here. Matter of fact, let me do, go dig a little bit and show you where some of it is. This area right here, and it's actually silver already. I can't, can't it kind of came in with silver to begin with right there. And I'm looking at that, that's a little bit a little bit bright. You know what I want to do? I'm going to add a little bit more silver to it. You may think you're adding silver to something that's going to lighten it up. No, it won't. It'll darken it up because the silver will actually give it kind of a green tone almost. Almost green gray. Let's brush some next to it and you can see the difference. Yeah, it's not much different. Let's go ahead and add some black to it. Where's my candy black? So you always keep a little stash of stuff around you. Let's go black with this. This little bit of candy black. I didn't notice I'm not using illustration black because that would almost be too much. The candy black has a tint to it. Let's the silver come through. A little bit more. Looks good. Always when adding candies to tint with, and I use candy black as what I call a neutral gray tinter. I'll tint any color with candy black to drop it down in value. It doesn't kill the chroma completely, even though it's kind of a bluish purple. It doesn't kill it completely. Let me go ahead and dab some of that off of there. Yeah, it looks pretty good actually doing that. So you're gonna, you're gonna discover little things like, oh, let me wipe that off. Oh, it looks good, then you have to wipe off everything on the helmet. Yeah, that's the color I'm looking for exactly right there. That 
So you're a little bit too bright on there. When it airbrushed, it airbrushed kind of nice, but it, you know, it still might be drying a little bit darker, but I'd rather just do this for now. And see this little chromate? I'm just gonna do a couple of stipples of this here and there. Not all over the helmet, just enough to show that this underlying color is still there throughout the helmet. And there's a little bit of it down here. It's not, it's not everywhere, it's just little, little places here and there. Okay. So I'm going to go back and do this over the whole helmet to add another depth of texture, another, another color, and at that point we should pretty much be done. Okay, you see I've did enough of this little uh, chromate green back here, it kind of creates a nice balance, and then I even came in, because I darkened it a little bit more than this, and came in and, well, let me just rub that off of there, which works fine. I'm going to come in and do a little bit along this too, just to kind of create some erosion around the edge of this to kind of make it look old. Not a lot, just a little bit here and there. And I can also come in with a rag and kind of dab that. And kind of come back a little bit more. So you can have a lot of fun with this erosion. Now I discovered something kind of interesting with this uh, this, this green color, because as I was going along looking at the reference, I noticed that this green was only on the dark green. It wasn't in this and it wasn't in the red, which is lucky because I was like looking to start doing it there and I realized, okay, if that's the case, then maybe there's a different primer or a different color was back in here. And that's why on the front, I just added just a little bit of it in there. So not a whole lot. So when you really look at something, it's very important to be observant. And uh, the observation is necessary to uh, figure out the reason behind it. Like when I'm looking at logos, I'm try first thing I'll try and do, like in this situation, I'll look at um, this little logo right here that you see. And I've got to do that little logo on this side of the piece. And I try and figure out what is it. Well, it looks like one of those little things that you take a picture of with your, with your camera. And, uh, you know, for like information to go online with. So I'm just gonna create something very similar to it. And if it looks like something familiar, I'll try and maybe research a little bit. Like what's that little stupid thing on the side of the, you know, the helmet? And I'll either get an answer for it. And I guarantee if there's two emblems that are Mandalorian, someone's already created a 26 letter alphabet for the Mandalorian. So right here, I'm gonna use this illustration. And I'm gonna come in here very, very carefully with this one brush. And it looks like a square, so I'm only gonna do two sides of the square first. Just freehand them in there. And then I'm gonna come in from this side, and I rotate it around, since it's easier for me to rotate the piece I'm working on than to actually brush in that direction. I'm kinda of doing it at an angle so you can see better too. This doesn't have to be perfect, but man, you do these little bitty details, and oh. Cosplay people lose, lose themselves in it. And I'm not making fun of them, I'm one of them, I love this stuff. And there's a little dot in this one, not quite sure what it is, but it is a dot right here. There's a dot on this side. And there's a dot on that side. So there, and that's done. This piece right here, got that little logo, whatever the heck that thing's supposed to mean, that one's done. Now, I'm gonna go to the other, huh? Cameraman just says he wanna see it again, so there you go. Now, I'm gonna go to this other side, And I noticed this, this right here, there's a weird little dot and a little T up there on that side. And then these little lines, and it makes me feel good because I'm like, man, those are done really badly. And this is actually a Lucas approved piece <laughs> online. So I was like, oh, I can do better lines than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my little lines on the bottom of this piece and do that dot and that T, whatever the heck that's supposed to be. So this is the piece we're talking about right here. And then on the top, I'm gonna do the little dot. 
and then below it, a little T. Okay. Just like that. And then I can come in and do these lines on the bottom. And it looks like the lines go halfway between here and there. So I will very carefully do one line there, one line there, and continue the lines. I'm trying to square them off a little bit. They don't need to be perfect. In this situation, this needs to be better than the picture I have, which, you know, if I can make something look better than my reference, do it. Now, could I get really fancy with this? I'm sure someone out there has a set of decals already for this. That's fine. I'd rather just paint. There we go. Some nice lines there. I'll do one on the very end to match. So I did one on the end over there. There we go. We'll call that a day on that piece. And uh, so that piece kind of lines up right here with whatever that is. I don't know, this is just a housing for the antenna. Now there is some black on this helmet. It's another thing, I always do this. I always will clean my brushes, get everything done, put everything away, and all of a sudden it's like, Doo! I got some more black I forgot on the back of the helmet. There's this area. See this, this, gr this grating back here? Let me see if I can get that over here. Here we go, that's better. So I need to come in and just, I'll use the same small brush because I like this little thin brush I found. Now, if you wonder where I got these brushes at, um, I went, actually, Chris had a bunch of brushes stashed over here at Craytex, so I just used those. I didn't bring any of my own. And uh, yes, I'm using my finger to wipe it, big deal. Uh, you can get tons of brushes at Hobby Lobby, whatever. There's not like a specific, oh, you gotta get the right Mandalorian brush. You know, just, you know, in this, in, like in this situation, I'm just using the illustration mixed up with the 4050. No reducer. The only reducer is what I dip the brush in to clean. And so a little bit of the reducer is left on that brush, which kind of helps. But uh, if I had more reducer on it, it wouldn't be covering very well. And just, I got a little bit there, wipe it off my finger. Nice thing about having a thrash surface, looks better when you screw things up. You can, use that. I'm going to go ahead and finish these all up. We're going to go ahead and give it a once over. Um, I'll mask this guy off. I forgot him. I was just, <laughs> like, oh, more black. Don't forget him. We're going to mask this silver off. I'll have it ready. So the next time you're going to see this, we're going to have it all ready to clear. We're going to put like a mixture of matte and satin, which is 4052 and 4051 together. Uh, because I don't want it to be just totally matte. I want to have a little bit of a shine to it. And uh, very, very durable. We could put a couple of nice wet coats on it, make sure it's pinhole free coverage to seal this so we could wipe this thing down or it could get wet. It can be worn all the time. And, uh, and we'll be done. Okay, we painted this last night, or I finished painting all the little texture last night. Decided to let sit uh, overnight. I mean, we were gonna go home anyway. But uh, whenever you're doing brushwork and getting the paint really heavy, it's always good to let sit even longer. Now with uh, solvent-based paint, you may be tempted, if you've got a baking booth, to put it in there and put it on a bake cycle. And that's fine. With water-based water paint, you wanna be really careful when you get really thick globs of paint like I did doing the faux finishing. If you bake that, it hardens the outside skin and traps that water inside. So we just let it sit overnight and it was fine. Uh, most paint, you can go in hours, no big deal. But when you're doing brushwork, it's a lot heavier. And then I also came through and did little touch-ups here and there on stuff. If you notice on this one, on the, the um, 
the heads up display on his helmet. I added some, some texture. I did a little stippling using uh, a dirtied up silver, the same silver we used on the helmet that was blackened up. And just did that flick trick where you pull back the trigger with no air, load up the needle and just let the air splatter it. And then added some erosion here and there. I've seen on some different helmets. Got to have that red and blue dot on the top right there, which I did with a silver base. When it's clear, it'll be a little bit brighter than normal. And it is a heads up display, so I figured it's only fair to give, give uh, Boba Fett something to look at. So I added a little smiley face there just for fun, because this thing actually will go down in front of the visor, and you'll actually see that when you tilt it down. So that's just me being goofy. Uh, I noticed a couple other things when I was uh, looking at different images online. I found this little, I don't know, it's like uh, Boba Fett's upset because his ice cream fell off his ice cream cone. So it was just a little ice cream cone right there in two dots. I saw that on a couple of different helmets, so I added that on there, added the simil similar stipple texture on there, and, uh, and they just kind of went over the whole helmet, made sure it was cleaned up. And you also may notice I've got some holes drilled in some different pieces. Well, I took a drill and also drilled holes in the helmet where I'm gonna be epoxying on the pieces later on. They're not gonna come off, they're gonna be permanent. And this gives a mechanical tooth as well as a chemical tooth. Now, you can say, well, you should've drilled it after it was cleared. Um, just in case I skated the drill, I didn't really wanna do that. And also, I'm not worried, even though I'm putting clear on top of this, it's gonna be a, um, a mixture of uh, 4051 and 4052, which is the satin and the matte UVLS clear. And these are alphatic resins. Alphatic resins are used in glues. So they're very, very adhesive. So I'm not worried about any of that resin getting inside there. It'll just add to the, the mechanical and chemical adhesion of the overall clear coat and the pieces that are gonna glue on a little bit later. I've got these taped down here on my, on my paper. Um, I'm gonna clear this one on here because it's just easier to get to both sides. Everything else is really just one-sided. That's gonna be glued, so I don't need to paint the back side of that. And, uh, and we're ready. I've already mixed up uh, the clear. Uh, it's a one-to-one. -one. Like I said, uh, I wanted something not quite as satin, but not quite matte. So we combined the two together and then added about, oh, between 5 and 10 percent of the reducer and let it to 4011, then let it sit for 15 minutes. I'm using the LPH80 gun that's got the EH head and the 1.2, or E4 head, sorry, and the 1.2 nozzle. Um, can't think of anything else to tell you right now, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask on, turn the booth on. We'll get this cleared. We're gonna let sit. Uh, probably, we got the rest of the day, so I'll probably wait for like about four or five hours, completely let it, let it sit and dry, and then I'm gonna go ahead and epoxy and clamp the parts onto it so the helmet will then be officially done. Hey guys, we are back in the booth and the helmet is 100% done. It looks fantastic. The finishing touch is gonna to be doing this uh, little screen, the black face screen in here. So Craig unfortunately had to hop on a plane and head back home to California, so he left me in charge of dealing with that. And uh, typically what we would have done would use a just a black piece, already black, almost like window tint, um, piece of mylar or acetate. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't really find one, but it was actually a great opportunity for us to show you uh, the versatility of our Candy 2.0. So we're going to use uh, Duralar, which is a synthetic acetate, right? So this is stuff you guys might be familiar with. It's very similar to uh, what you guys are using if you have any of your stencils. So these are sheets of acetate, clear film, and we're going to use that. So what I went ahead and did was I made a template out of just masking paper and cut it down to size so it actually fits perfectly on the inside of this reveal. It's inside of the helmet. I transferred that over to a piece of acetate, uh, the, the Duralar, cut it out, and what I did was I taped this up, and I, the only reason I did that was to allow just the paint, the overspray, to stay off the front of this, because all we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse paint this kind of like an RC car. So the other part of it is actually helping because I have it taped down to a piece of cardboard so it's not gonna blow all over the place. So we're gonna do it with Candy 2.0, and it's ready to go. I just gave it a quick wipe with actually our 4020 reducer that actually makes a great cleaner for uh, plastic because it has a little bit of acetone in it and uh, it'll actually kill kind of the static electricity. The water in there will actually neutralize any kind of a static charge, especially when you're working with plastic like that. It has a tendency to get real, real uh, sticky in terms of uh, the static electricity. So for this, I'm gonna use my TH2. 
Love this gun, uh, like always. Uh, and uh, we have our Candy 2 all mixed four to one. So we did four parts of our 4050 to one part Candy 2 all black. And we're gonna go ahead and just spray very nice and even and very almost a little on the dry side. Even though it is candy for this because we're trying to black this out, I'm going to go ahead and do some mist coats to build up the color because we are painting a shiny piece of plastic. And I did not scuff this, all I did was wipe it down. So that's all we're gonna do is slowly build up color. If you go too heavy, what'll happen is this is gonna wanna scatter on you because it's almost like painting over wax. So we're gonna do a couple light coats, let that tack up really nice, and then probably four or five coats, we'll get this looking exactly where we want. We're gonna let that dry up nice. And then what I'm gonna do is come back and put a finishing coat of 4050 just straight out of the bottle with a little bit of reducer over the top of that to lock in that candy. And then we'll let that dry and then we'll glue it in place and we're gonna call this project done. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, we are back in the booth. My visor is all painted. I put four coats of candy black over that piece of uh, acetate, the Duralar. Uh, just a little two-part epoxy just to bind the edges here and, and lock this in place in the helmet. So I think, again, this is just a really cool Simple but really detailed at the same time uh, piece that, that demonstrates what you can do with our paint system and, and the, uh, the 4050. In this case, it was the 4051, the satin finish on here as, as the overall to, to lock everything down. So this about wraps this project up. Again, big thanks to Craig Fraser and Craig Fraser Studios for coming out here and doing this. And this is going to stay here on display. So the only thing left to do is to uh, try this thing out and see how it fits. So thanks again, guys. I am Chris Arpin here at Createx. We'll see you next time.